Formal wear, such as evening, dinner, and reception dresses, capture some of the most highly elaborated examples of the new styles and colors, patterns, and ornamentation that came into fashion in the 1860s. Fashions of this decade often featured brilliant colors and bold patterns. Following the introduction of synthetic dyes in the previous decade, bright, almost garish blues, greens, and purples saw great popularity. Several of the dresses in this exhibition demonstrate these bold color choices. Purple was the color of the first synthetic dye, Mauveen, which was discovered by William Henry Perkin in 1856. Before this dye was developed, purple was extremely difficult and costly to create through natural sources. Two of the dresses in this exhibition feature this purple color. The pattern on this dress combines plaid with a floral print. The pattern is achieved through a process known as warp printing, in which the fibers are printed before the fabric is woven. This technique leads to blurriness around the edges of the pattern. This evening dress has been warp printed with a large scale floral pattern. The fabric also combines two different weave structures. The vertical bands of printing are taffeta or plain weave, while the solid stripes are satin weave. The satin stripes have a sheen that contrasts with the printed ground. Blue was another of the colors that was created with new synthetic dyes. In this textile, the stripes of blue alternate with the stripes that are patterned with warp printed leaves. Several of the pieces demonstrate the popularity of fringe. Typically, the trimming was positioned around the yoke of the bodice at the shoulder and cuffs of the sleeves and along the hem. This blue taffeta dress bears a particularly elaborate fringe that combines twists of cord with beads. The entire fringe hangs from a strip of braid that is stitched to the dress. Such trimming would be purchased separately and applied like the other types of braid. In some cases, the fringe is applied alongside coordinated ribbon trim. The braid on this dress is quite intricate. While it resembles rickrack with its waving lines, it is actually a number of distinct cords braided together. Among the pieces of outerwear, there are several more examples of fringe. In particular, the brown velvet cape is edged with very long silken fringe. This edging overlaps the fringe that trims the dress underneath. The fringe on the sleeves of the dress combine the smoother silken strands with the frizzy strands. All of these are edged with a binding that includes patterning with velvet-like pile. While trimmings during the early part of the decade depended on heavily patterned ribbons and fringe, by 1870, trimmings increasingly involved manipulating fabric. This sheer dress with green stripes and trim dates to the second half of the 1860s. The fabric is known as tarlatan, which is a very fine cotton weave that has been stiffened. And this dress illustrates the popularity of using self-fabric as trim. The rosette at the back has been formed through ingenious manipulation of the striped tarlatan. By the end of the 1860s, the vogue for large patterns gave way to an increased use of subtler patterning and even solid colors. One of the latest dresses in the exhibit is this gold taffeta dress. The entire dress is a single solid color. The ornament is created through gathering and shaping the taffeta. One edge of the ruffle has been finished with bias binding, top stitched by machine. The row of top stitching in itself becomes a decorative element. The other edge has been shaped into a zigzag. The copious amount of ruffles attests to the new possibilities that developed with the widespread adoption of sewing machines.